Yes, my name is Demir Demirkan. I watch Cat Harvey success, but nothing less. Hey, you guys, I'm Cat Harvey, the host and the producer of the Cat Harvey show. I'm so excited to have a favorite, favorite guest of mine. I mean, his sound is absolutely amazing. So what you guys know, I love exposing all types of global artists. I see nothing but great things for him. I think he can collab with Beyonce. Um, <laughs> a lot of the greats. I mean, this his sound is amazing. Please welcome the musician himself, Demir Demirkin. How are you? Hey, good. Thanks a lot for having me here. I'm, I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm doing great. So, you know, tell people, you know, a little bit about your sound and music. I know some of my listeners, um, they listen to rap and pop, but I gave them a little sneak peek of your sound. So can you explain it just a little bit? Sure. Um, I don't do pop or rap. So, you know, that's, I guess that's where I should start. Um, it's mostly like hard rock and, you know, some melodic uh, regular rock and some kind of like uh, going into the heavy metal territory. I play guitar and sing and write my own material mostly. And um, I've been doing this for about 25 years and I've done most of it uh, in Europe and Turkey. I am from Turkey, so I used to live in Istanbul. Um, I lived in Istanbul for like 18 years and just moved to New York about two and a half years ago or so. Um, so I just put out an album here. Um, it's an English one. Um, it's actually an EP, it's not an album. It's about five songs and um, it's, we co-wrote it with uh, another songwriter producer called Phil Goldston and it's called War 3, uh, and the first episode of the whole trilogy is uh, Awakening. Okay, so how yeah. long did it take you to put that piece together? Do you work, are you that type of artist that works really fast when you're in the zone, or does it take you a long time to compose those songs? Uh, if I'm in the zone, it's fast, but it takes me a bit of time to get into the zone, so, <laughs> you know, uh, this one this one took about, um, about eight, eight months or so, but, I mean, if I only wrote it, myself and without collaborating with anybody um that could have been a lot faster but you know the time schedules in new york being crazy and all that and everybody's so busy that you know keeping the time schedule uh, with everybody uh kind of extends that time period um so um yeah if i'm by myself I, i'm pretty fast but if i'm with people then you have to kind of uh, work according to their schedules okay so who are some people that you would like to collab with Oh wow. wow, there are many. I mean, I, I, I don't really, um, I'm not really particular about the genres, you know, uh, I can, I, I have worked with people from the, you know, the, the pop section of the whole uh, music thing, uh, a lot of world music artists and a lot of uh, traditional uh, local Turkish artists, um, jazz people and metal people, you know, so I don't really, um, I, into, I'm not really into this. It has to be metal or it has to be rock kind of thing. Um, it's always good to have people uh, around and make music with uh, from different uh, backgrounds. So it, it enriches uh, your music and your musical uh, vocabulary, if you'd like. Um, so it could be anybody but who would write with me. <laughs> you know? so, so you don't have a, um, I'm sure you have a list or something, like a, a magical list who you would, yeah, well, would love to be on there. Do you have like a top two or three people? Sure. Oh yeah, uh, David Gilmore is one of them. You know, David Gilmore of uh, uh, Pink Floyd. You know, the guitar oh, player yeah. and the singer is definitely on the top. And uh, I'm kind of like old school, so um, I would go and definitely collaborate with people like uh, um, Eric Clapton, maybe, or um, people from um, Blues World, like Buddy Guy or Joe Bonamassa, you know, people like that. You know. They're mostly guitar players, obviously, because I'm a guitar player, so, you know, I love their stuff, and, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of great stuff would come out that way. Okay, so what advice, you have a lot of um, musicians that look up to you. How, what did you do when you first started as far as getting your music um, out there, and how has it changed for you when, you, when it comes to just oh. and the whole marketing piece? Yeah, it was really different when I got into it. Like I said, it was 25 years ago. Um, there wasn't any internet. You know, we, we don't have cell phones. You know what I mean? So uh, forget social media and all the streaming and, you know, downloads, and anything like that. And mu music wasn't digitalized uh, to be shared. It, the only digital thing that you get was the CD, basically. And you had to have the hard copy. Um, uh, so it was really different. It was a time uh, for for the the, uh, the record labels, um, and, you know, with the whole internet thing, the record label thing just 
you know, kind of declined. And they're there now, but they're not doing what they used to do. And people actually come write anything in their room for, you know, the whole night. And then in the morning when they're done, they can just upload it. And, uh, the whole, you know, it's open to the whole world right away. Um, so this is good and bad on both sides because, you know, everybody can do it now. So it's just this cloud of music and which one do you pick, you know? So um, the whole mass uh, marketing thing, I think, finished like maybe five years ago or something like that. And so this is more like person to person now. So um, on social media, you basically talk to people and if you like hanging out with those people on social media and then they come to your show and if you like hanging out with them at the show or they like you, that's it, you're done, that's the end point. And you keep on doing the, your music and sharing it with them. And if, you know, if different people get on board, then you have a wider audience. If they don't, you just keep along you know, with, with the people that, that is um, uh, listening to you basically. Um, so it's very difficult right now to be a huge rock star kind of thing, you know? And I don't know if you would like it. You know, I, I kind of lived it. It's good up to a point, maybe when you're younger or something, you have different ambitions and all that. But, it, you know, it just wears off really quick. You know, you're like, okay, well, you know, this is good, but it, I, I don't think it should last, <laughs> you know? Uh, I, think, I think music should last, you know, writing songs and playing guitar and performing and recording and doing the best you can and uh, just opening up your, yourself to, uh, to, to uh, better musical possibilities. I think uh, that kind of grows you as an artist. And if you keep that mentality in the beginning of all things, when, once you're starting up, you know, like when you're younger, um, I think you can succeed. But if your ambitions um, lie on the, I want to be famous so people can copy my tattoos and you know, what have you, that doesn't fly with me. I don't know. I'm not into that thing. <laughs> <You know? laughs> now, I'm going to ask you a very uh, question, which is why, you know, you're doing your passion. That's great. But you still need to make some money, right? And yeah. some things that you wish you probably would have done with your money when you were younger. Um, that you would tell the young artist to come up. Actually, I've been pretty smart with my money. So, um, oh, you have? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't blow it up. So. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I had a lot of uh, uh, advice from the people who were who already made it in the music industry. And the first advice I got, and most of the advices I got, was that um, you have to invest into something other than music. Um, it could be anything. It could be, you know, just real estate or whatever. Real estate is easiest, and everybody does that. Um, so I did that, basically. So um, once you're secure financially. I'm not talking about like huge savings and, you know, helicopters and stuff. Like I'm just saying that, you know, you're at a point that you can pay your rent and, you know, you know, pay for your basic needs. Um, then you don't have to sell out on your music. So you don't have to do, do popular things so people like it and then you make money off of it. Um, because you don't really need to do that. Then what you can do is really go into what you would like to put out, how you would like to express yourself and you know, do something different that's actually gonna stay for generations and generations, uh, it, which is worth it. You know, um, I think that is the best way to, to do it. You know, uh, once you have the money, don't just go and party or something. I mean, you obviously you gotta party. You have to party. You know, but don't party it all the way. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so how have you how have you dealt with the rejection? You know, in the beginning. Yeah. Um, I'm still deal dealing with it. It's, it's, it's never over, you know, and it's never easy. Um, it, it, I'm not really good at it, you know, I can say. <laughs> so my uh, way of dealing with it is to become better so I don't get rejected, you know, uh, because I, I, I once years ago, I was going to be an actor. Uh, you know, I took lessons and then I went to a few auditions and, uh, you know, I said, I can't do this, man. Uh, you know, because uh, like an actor's work is always going to the auditions and getting rejected, rejected, rejected. Like, and once in a hundred times, uh, you get selected, and then you make it. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to do that. Uh, it's not like that in music. It's more like 
you do it and then you know third or fourth time or something like that at least something happens you gotta get, get on a stage and play and you've got like you know like 80 people or something or 40 people listening to you and then you build up it's all on you when i have the responsibility on my hands i feel better uh, and then I try to do uh, the set up the whole thing myself and, you know, kind of manage it. Um, but if you're into the whole, well, you know, somebody's going to sign me, I'm going to make a big thing. Good luck with that. You know, <laughs> I have no answer to that. <laughs> you know, yeah. I have to ask you, you know, you moved, you said you were in, you were in Turkey first, right? And now you're in New York, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So what do you have to say to those people who, um, who are in smaller maybe cities or countries and probably not known for the big, you know, singing and career wise, as far as, you know, the big two cities are LA and New York, you know, if you want to make sure. it big. So a lot yeah. of people, they, they don't concentrate on being big, I would say, or being a local superstar in their own backyard. They try to go to places like New York and yeah. they end up failing really, really bad. So what do you have to say to those people who rather, take a leap of faith, go to New York, as opposed to starting where they are and kind of building that up, then going to New York. Yeah. You know, uh, Leonard Cohen has a song called uh, First We Take Manhattan and We Take Berlin. I don't know if you ever heard that, that song. So you really have to conquer your own ground first. You got to be the big fish in the small pond. And then, you know, it's like being local uh, in your neighborhood and then your town and then your city and then your region and then your state and then you know you know uh, you know few states around like if you're here you can do the tri-state thing and if you're already big in the tri-state area you're you're pretty big you know you, you can actually tour europe um you don't have to have the whole american thing happening you know if you have the east coast that's it i mean some people actually just do that you know and i think that's enough for them because the big the bigger your territory is uh, then people who are investing in, in you uh, tend to get back from their investments. So you're kind of uh, obligated to what they ask you to do all the time and repeat the thing that makes money so they can get their money kind of deal. So uh, there's a threshold um, of being your own artist. And after that threshold, you're like, uh, you're kind of demanded uh, so you have to make some kind of compromise on your uh, artistic output. Um, some people go that way too. You know, it's, it's just, you know, their choice. Um, I'd rather be the first one. You know, I, I don't like to compromise on the music. So um, if it's regional for me, it's only New York. Hey, you know, I, I'm moving to Texas now. I'm going to uh, Austin in about a month. Uh, I'm actually relocating. So if I do something in Austin and then Dallas and then what have you, and then Texas, fine you know if i'm doing texas i'm going to europe for sure you know it's like that i'm telling you like in states in the united states it, it's different like if you, if you think about this you know the whole state things um they're countries all by themselves so it's like being famous in germany or something like if you make it big in texas you're like you just made it in turkey kind of deal you see what i mean you don't have to make it in the whole United States of America to, you know, be something. <laughs> I don't know if I'm making sense. This is my point of view as a European, you know? Yeah. I have a couple more questions. So you deal with a lot of promoters, I, I could imagine. Yeah. So yeah. what are some big things that you learned in the beginning as far as who you choose to do business with? Yeah. Uh, they never end to <laughs> fail me. <laughs> Let me say that. Um, and surprise me, um, what happens is usually if you're not really drawing a lot of people, like you, you're not the popular that year or the, that couple of years, um, you'll get worse, um, spots on the festivals or something, you know, you're not headlining, obviously, uh, like you, you get up on the stage and you perform like at 3 PM, you know, under the sun instead of like can you hear me yeah i can yeah uh instead of being the headliner or just you know one before the headliner or something um and then if you really want to play and they go like well what if i what if you don't charge anything from me this time so next year 
I'm going to get you this spot. That never happens. Yeah, I mean, you have to really think about what you compromise and how you get out of it and stuff like that. And um, from a promoter's point of view, uh, they have to make money and they have to make people happy. So next year um, or next show, there are going to be uh, more people coming. So it's not like... Hey man, you know my music is great. You know, it's, no one really cares about that in that business. You know, if you draw, they're just gonna book you. So that's the bottom line. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. what other? Um, do you have any more projects coming out um, this year that people can look out for? Um, I I started writing again, and uh, I think I was gonna make a Turkish album uh, for Turkey, and. Um, I'm moving to Austin now, so obviously I'm going to collaborate with some people there and let's see what's going to come out. I think more bluesy stuff is going to come out, it seems so, which I like a lot, you know. Um, so I have to incorporate my background, uh, the whole Anatolian Turkish thing uh, with the blues and more hard rock kind of thing. So I don't know what's going to come out. Uh, it could be very interesting. Um, so I'm very, very excited about that actually and um but i don't think anything will come out in 2018 but something will come out in 19 for sure <laughs> you know it's either a, a turkish album or something in english okay okay so tell people you know the reason why they need to go get your ep right now and do you have a favorite um song yeah um well war three is a concept that I thought about um, after I came to New York, after I moved to New York, um, I think it's not a, it's, some people think it's a political album, but I don't think it's a political uh, uh, statement or anything like that. It's more like a, uh, the emotional output of a person who is um, kind of being thrown off with all the political issues, like what's happening in the United States with the whole uh, presidential um, thing and you know some maybe in Russia or in Turkey or in Syria or what have you you know uh, so a lot of stuff is happening and people tend to think uh, countries as their problems so when you look at a country like Russia you think oh okay so you, you kind of like stereotype the whole Russian thing into that you know but no there are actual people living there like you and me you know if you talk to one of them you would actually get along real well you know or it could be anybody, it could be a Muslim or, or, or a Christian or a Jewish person. Um, so from that individual's point of view, what happens to us when all these political things are happening? What happens to our lives, our dreams, our relationships, you know, uh, the media, you know, controlling everything and media being controlled by the higher, you know, whatever, um, and the you know, judicial system and all that. So um, we're kind of, you know, the, uh, when the elephants play or fight, the grass on there on the top of kind of gets squished so we don't want to be that grass and you know we're really just you know under those elephants playing and uh, that's not fun at all so it's that album so it's a very very personal and individualistic album and um it's called war three and it's a trilogy first episode of a trilogy and called it's called awakening so this is the awakening and there are two more episodes coming um so I can't tell them now. They're all offline and everything. And my favorite song um, on uh, that EP, actually two songs. Second song, Hold On To The Innocence, and the last song called Let It Burn. Um, so hey, you know, if you want to check it out, great. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Well, thank you so much for your time today. Um, I see nothing but great things for you. We're actually here on a Sunday. I'm letting you guys know that right now because he is a hustler and he's serious about his music. And, you know, I truly appreciate it because, you know, like I always say, time is the one thing you never get back. So I definitely appreciate your time, especially on a Sunday. And oh, me too, definitely, definitely. <laughs> and, yeah. Thank you, thanks for, you know, we couldn't really hang out with the, uh, really do it with the technical problems, but uh, great, thanks a lot, you know. Yeah, thank you.